So normally when I do a breakdown of two different works, I spend a lot of time discussing the history of the people behind the various productions. But given the popularity of these two programs, I'm not sure what else I need to say beyond one show is a British production that comes from the BBC and rocketed its two leads into superstardom. The other is an American program that aired on CBS and starred a well-known character actor who starred in numerous films, TV shows, and stage productions, alongside a big-name actress who lended her credibility to the series. That all said, given the enormous difference in length between these two programs, BBC's Sherlock went on for four seasons, consisting of three one-and-a-half episodes per season, plus one non-canon New Year's Day special released on January 1st, 2016, set during Victorian times in contrast to the show's uh, broadly modern take, while CBS's Elementary lasted for seven seasons and usually lasted 24 episodes ranging from 43 to 46 minutes each, until season six, which had 21 episodes, and season 7, which only had 13. I figured I'd take a moment to explain what the scope of my analysis will be. This comparison will only be focusing on the initial rivalry between Sherlock Holmes and his nemesis, Moriarty, and the budding friendship between Sherlock and his companion, Dr. Watson, meaning we'll only be comparing series 1 and 2 of Sherlock against Elementary's first season. So with all that said, take it away, Pharaoh. It's time to do 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 Benedict Cumberbatch is a great actor. Of this, there are no ifs or buts. He is consistently stupendous, even without expending that much effort. Now that said, in my own personal opinion, not only is Johnny Lee Miller the better actor, he is easily the better Sherlock Holmes. Why do I say that? Because Johnny Lee's Sherlock is an actual character. He's not just another insufferable genius trope. He's an insufferable genius with actual feelings, who has to deal with actual emotional trauma from the years of neglect from his father, from the loss of the only woman he's ever loved, from the shame of being a dry act, and the pressure that comes from not just being in recovery in general, but specifically being in recovery while you're in the especially stressful field of being a criminal investigator. Benedict Cumberbatch's Sherlock never even comes close to having to deal with any of that. He never comes close to having to deal with any actual emotions. He is consistently dismissing people as less intelligent than him, even people who are ostensibly his friends, while Johnny Lee has to actually grow as a person. He starts off as dismissive of his Watson and her role in his life, but when he realizes she's actually been staying on with him without being paid to look after him, he calls her on it and tells her to stick with him as his partner in crime solving. Fuck this over companion thing. That's done. We can just be partners in crime solving. Well, Benedict regards Watson as either a dog or worse yet, the occasional lab rat. The most emotional he's ever gotten is when he has to kill himself at the end of series two, which we know doesn't actually take because we see him outside his own funeral at the end of the episode. And on top of that, while they're both jerk-ass smart guys, Johnny's Sherlock actually has a sense of restraint about what subjects you really don't want to bring up. Well, Benedict just lets loose without care. In the first episode of Elementary, Sherlock at first says that the reason that Watson doesn't practice surgery anymore is because she had a relationship with a colleague that ended poorly. Watson later tries to explain that the real reason was because she lost a patient but Sherlock explains he already knows that. He said it was a boyfriend thing because he didn't want to upset her too much. Meanwhile, in the first episode of Series 2, Cumberbatch's Sherlock assumes the CSI girl he knows, Molly Hooper, has a Christmas gift addressed to who, someone she's crushing on, but goes out of his way to dismiss that they would absolutely not like her back because she's not that attractive until he realizes that the gift is for him and he's the one she's crushing on because Benedict Cumberbatch's Sherlock is a fucking asshole. The first point goes to Elementary. Both Watsons are probably my favorite character in both shows. While I think Martin Freeman is very enjoyable as basically this normal, everyday guy that occasionally gets to react to all the amazing, wonderful things that the incredible Sherlock son deduces, ooh. But he doesn't have much of an arc. His character arc is resolved inside the first episode. Everything after that is just him dealing with his insane roommate. Lucy Liu's Watson actually does have a character arc, though, inside the first season. She goes from just being present to help Sherlock recover from his heroin addiction, to actively participating in his efforts to solve murders, to actually being the one who outplays Moriarty. At the end of season one, when the good guys actually managed to put away Moriarty, that's not because of what Sherlock Holmes figured out. It's because 
Dr. Joan Watson figured them out. She saw through their game and found out the way to beat them. John Watson? He's basically Cumberbatch's pawn. There's even an episode where Cumberbatch's Sherlock actually drugs Martin Freeman's Watson. He wants to test to see what's up with this Hound of Baskerville thing, so he actually tries to drug Watson to see if it's just a hallucination. Meanwhile, Johnny Lee Miller's Sherlock actually makes Lucy Liu his assistant as a consulting detective. Yeah, this isn't close either. Point for elementary. This is another one that I find pretty easy to call. Well, Detective Inspector Lestrade is a fun character. He doesn't have half the development that Captain Gregson gets. Lestrade is a good man who wants to do good things with the law, and he tries to be diplomatic with Sherlock, but he isn't afraid to push back on him. For, like, one episode. And then never again. By contrast, Gregson has all of those qualities as well, but he, he actively does push back on Sherlock more than once, and Sherlock completely respects him for it. There's actually one episode where Sherlock and Watson find out that the perp in a 20-year-old case uh, that Gregson was involved in only got put away because someone planted evidence with the perp's DNA on it. Sherlock privately confronts Captain Gregson about if he did it, and Sherlock says that he just assumes if he did do it, he probably had a good reason, and that he's not asking out of a place of disrespect because he does completely respect Gregson. Gregson, however, viscerally defends himself by insisting that he's not dirty. And in a later episode, when Sherlock goes out of his way to try and kill a suspect he has a personal grudge against, Gregson refuses to call in Sherlock for any more cases going forward until Sherlock keeps forcing his way into the matter. Finally, Gregson caves in and says he'll work with him, but do not assume that I trust you anymore, which Sherlock completely understands. Is some of that copaganda Probably, but look, it's a crime drama. If your show isn't a little pro cop, you're not doing it right. Point for elementary. This one actually goes to Lara. While I love Natalie Dormer in general, and Marjorie Terrell was one of my favorite characters in Game of Thrones, I really don't care for her Irene Adler that much, because she's honestly too much like Sherlock. I think Irene should be as intelligent as Holmes, but I think she should also have a very different temperament. And while I hate that Laura Pulver's Irene is actually beaten by Sherlock in the end, I love her actual characterization, and I love Laura's performance. She's a bisexual dominatrix who seduces Kate freaking Middleton and holds photos of their encounter on her phone as protection against the royal family because they know if this gets out, they're going to skewer her. They're gonna nail her to the fucking wall. And the most brilliant part of her character is when she first meets Sherlock, she sits in front of him completely naked. And Sherlock can't get a read on her either because he has nothing to make an analysis off of or because he's just so flustered at the sight of a naked woman chatting him up like it's no big deal. It's absolutely brilliant. Well, Natalie Dormer's Irene is just kind of Sherlock's girlfriend. I mean, she's a painter who shares Sherlock's analytical skill, but she only exists to be hurt by Moriarty so that Moriarty in turn can hurt Sherlock. She's not a bad character, but I think this is one instance where Stephen Moffat's persistent horniness and love of camp actually outweighs Robert Doherty's straightforward crime and drama sensibilities. There's a twist that makes Natalie's Irene a much more interesting character than she initially appears to be, but it's also something that changes her character in a way that makes her no longer Irene Adler. So in the end, I feel pretty comfortable offering this to Sherlock. So first point here. Skipping over the actual twist, let's start with Sherlock's Moriarty. Andrew Scott is a great actor and he's clearly putting a lot of energy into Jim, but his character is written in a way that's just so confusing. He's introduced in a brilliant way at the end of series one, but his actions going forward are just so random. It's not that he's just crazy, it's that his character makes no fucking sense. Episodes 1 and 2, he's a hidden criminal mastermind, manipulating people from behind the scenes. Episode 3, he just blows up Sherlock's apartment and spies on him at work while posing as Molly Hooper's new boyfriend before revealing himself later in the episode and stating his intent to take Sherlock's approach to solving crimes and apply it to helping people commit crimes and warns Sherlock to stay out of his plans or else he'll kill him even though he literally already tried to do that at the start of the episode. Whatever. Episode 4 picks up where 3 left off, with Jim having decided to kill Sherlock and Watson after all. 
But then he gets a phone call that makes him change his mind. Cut to later in the episode where he sends Mycroft a text message about whatever the hell Irene is doing. Episode 5, he's somehow been picked up by the British government and now he's gone insane. Is constantly repeating Sherlock's name and said name is written all over his padded cell. Episode 6, he's out of prison and breaks into the Tower of London while wearing the Queen's robe and crown and requests that the police contact Sherlock himself. Then goes on to a trial where he either threatens the jury or pays them off in order to be rendered not guilty for his crimes, then poses as an actor to gaslight people into thinking Sherlock is the real villain and he's just some helpless man who's been manipulated. Then he tells Sherlock that he'll kill his friends unless Sherlock Holmes jumps off the roof of the ripe peanut box building. Then Sherlock says something that convinces Jim that he's like him, which in turn convinces Jim to kill himself because fuck Sherlock and forces Sherlock to jump off the fucking roof. He doesn't make sense. Or he already can't decide if he wants to kill Sherlock or if he wants to be Sherlock's nemesis so they can be Xavier and Magneto in the park playing chess every week and being genial despite actively hating each other. And then suddenly Jim wants him and Sherlock to enter into a suicide pact where if one of them dies, the other has to follow them shortly thereafter. And you can't just wave it off as, oh, he's crazy. No, crazy characters still have their own consistent logic. The logic doesn't have to make sense to everyone else, but it still has to have consistency with their actions. And Jim Moriarty really doesn't have any consistency. He just does whatever the hell Moffat thinks would be the most dramatic, because he's that extra, I guess. And with that out of the way, now we discuss the superior James Moriarty. Or should I say, Jamie Moriarty? Bet you wish you'd run away with me when you had the chance. I can't see. That's right. Natalie Dormer's Irene Adler is secretly Jamie Moriarty. And she's fucking awesome. <laughs> she's poised, sophisticated, and absolutely cold-blooded. While she does initially see Sherlock as something of a threat, she does eventually come to see him as something unique that she'd prefer not to destroy, but absolutely would if necessary. And her plan makes actual sense! She wants a Greek man to kill a Macedonian ambassador and her husband in order to cause the Macedonian parliament to reject a deal with Greece and therefore preventing Macedonia from joining the European Union, causing civil unrest and leaving her with plenty of Macedonian cash to swap out with either dollars, pounds, or euros. And on top of that, her character does the pretending to be someone else trick like Jim does, but she actually makes it a reasonably interesting character as opposed to just someone to be for a scene and then be done with forever. And the actual character does a better job of serving their purpose than Jim does. Irene is close enough to Sherlock to actually observe him, gather what his thoughts and feelings and opinions and biases are, and it manages to fuck her Sherlock up so bad that he becomes a heroin addict. Well, Jim's first character just hangs out with his Sherlock to realize he's kind of abrasive, kind of has a high opinion of himself, and his second character only turns people against Sherlock. It doesn't actually affect Sherlock to any significant extent because his closest circle of friends still know, no, Sherlock is the real deal. He really does know all this shit. So it doesn't really affect Sherlock emotionally in any meaningful way. And this isn't even touching on the fact that Nellie Dormer's assassins are far more intimidating than, than anyone who worked for Andrew Scott. Give me Vinnie Jones as M over the taxi killer any day of the week. Another point to elementary, and it's not even close. This one is pretty easy to call. Well, Candace Kane is a pretty interesting character, and I look forward to seeing more of her in more of Elementary. And it is really cool that they made their Miss Hudson a trans woman. She's only in one episode of season one, and isn't that large of a presence in it. Mrs. Una Subs, however, is in every episode of series one and two of Sherlock, and she's an absolute delight. She's just the sweetest old lady, and I love how... In episode 4, she's being beat up by these CIA guys, and when Watson gets on Sherlock's case about it, Mrs. Hudson, who's been sobbing and crying and acting so scared the whole episode, suddenly starts cracking up about how she's not hurt at all, 
that she's actually been having a blast fucking with these idiots. So, half a point for casting Candace, but the full point has to go to Una Subs and Sherlock. Every episode of Elementary has a really cool mystery. A go-to example is an episode where Sherlock and Watson come across a plane crash that the police are already having a look at, when Sherlock notices an irregularity with a wound on a dead passenger's leg. There's very little blood surrounding it. Had the passenger been alive when he'd received the wound, there'd be blood gushing all over his trousers. But instead, there's not very much of it. Now, this leads Sherlock to conclude that this passenger was already dead before the plane crashed and that the cause of his death was murder. And the way the story is wrapped up, everything makes perfect sense. It's wrapped up in a nice little bow. The killer's a proper motivation and their motivation or their methods, I'm sorry, are consistent with what we saw at the start of the episode. By contrast, the plots in Sherlock, in addition to just being overly long and needlessly complex, they often just don't make sense. Like in the second episode, a bunch of people have been murdered, and our episode starts by focusing on a Chinese English woman played by Gemma Chan, who works in a museum. In an episode of Elementary, I think she'd likely be the killer, and I think she would have a really interesting motive rant about why she did it, and possibly feature some tragic backstory that would make the audience really sympathize with her, even if we didn't necessarily agree with her. Well, because Sherlock has to be an hour and a half long, the killer ends up being this woman's long-lost twin brother who's become part of a Chinese circus troupe, of assassins because Stephen Moffat. And I'd like you to imagine this kind of crap, but spread out over six 90 minute episodes. Eller Mary isn't exactly reinventing the wheel here. CBS has five other shows like it right now, and they still had five other shows like it during Elementary's run. But a show doesn't need to be revolutionary to be good. If I might make a comparison to music, Give me a Meat and Potatoes Blues Rock album over a hoity-toity avant-garde album any fucking day of the week. Hmm, holier-than-thou, smarter-than-you jerk-ass who has to make the ultimate sacrifice and thus prove to everyone why he was always the most special person in the world. Versus holier-than-thou, smarter-than-you jerk-ass that has to eat some humble pie and let himself be the sacrificial queen so that his enemy can be put in checkmate. Hmm. War veteran whose dislike for complacency forces him to be kowtowed by some arrogant prick versus traumatized surgeon who finds a new life in helping take down serial killers. Hmm. Loudmouth, arrogant supervillain who kills himself just for the lulls versus a quiet and intelligent criminal mastermind who is only outdone by her own arrogance in a completely in-character moment. Yeah, I'm gonna call it. Elementary takes the final point, leaving us with a score of 6.5 to fucking 2. I swear I didn't go into this with the intention of bashing Sherlock. But Elementary really is that much better. It's structured better, it's written better, and a lot of the acting is better. But the way Sherlock is structured as a series is really terrible. You can do a lot with, 100, with 270 minutes of media if you use it correctly. Six 45-minute episodes a season, you could do great stuff with that show. You could build up Moriarty more, you could give Sherlock and Watson more character development. You'd have to spend less time on Sherlock dicking around or screaming about how he's bored. You'd have to spend less time on making jokes about how Sherlock and Watson totally aren't gay, bro. Sixteen. They made sixteen gay jokes about Sherlock and Watson over the course of two seasons. Over the course of six episodes. Get a new joke, Moffat. Jesus Christ! You have to spend less time on insulting your own fan base. So what you're basically saying is that your fans are fat, ugly kids too? Is that what you're trying to say to me, Mana? Huh? Is that what you want to say? You want to talk shit on the people that you care about, man? You have to spend more time actually fleshing out your mysteries, as opposed to just futzing around, being clever. If you make three TV movies once every couple years, then you have to structure them like actual films. The first Toy Story clocks in at 81 minutes, and it gets a lot done by focusing on the main plot. There's no fucking around. Everything focuses on everything relevant to Buzz and Woody. Who can help them? Who's opposing them? 
Can they get back to Andy in time? Sherlock is incredibly unfocused in this regard. In the second episode of the series, we start with a weird-ass sword fight between Sherlock and some guy with a scimitar, and then it ends with another weird-ass sword fight between Sherlock and some Chinese guy. And in the midst of all of that, a simple murder plot morphs into an overcomplicated plot about a Chinese circus filled with assassins. There's no point to this! You can cut this out! Just focus on the actual murders! And it's not like Elementary doesn't have silly stuff either. One episode starts with Sherlock sitting in the middle of his living room with two prostitutes dancing in front of him, and when he says he's ready to get started, they each pull a gun on him and say, get me your money. But it ends quickly because Sherlock then signals for the police to come in, and arrests the two women. It ends before it can really even begin. It doesn't waste time, it's just a fun way to start the episode before getting into the actual plot. And Elementary also has larger, more conspiratorial plots. One episode has a murder committed where the perp and the victim both turn out to be deep cover Russian spies. But here's the kicker, the focus is still on the actual murder. There's background business about the relationship between Sherlock and Watson, but it's the background business. The murder plot in Sherlock is the background business. The foreground issue is Watson pursuing a relationship with a nurse from a local clinic in London. It's a waste of time. Tighten this story up. Focus on the murder. Focus on the investigation. This is a crime show. Focus on the crime. So yeah, Sherlock definitely has better production values and it has a lot of great actors. Elementary has equally great actors and much superior writing. The stories are sharp and well constructed, and the actual season tells a great narrative both for the actual story and for individual character arcs. It's such good shit. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed this review, and if you did, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell, share this video with your friends, and comment down below with any of your takes on the matter. Do you prefer Sherlock over Elementary? Do you also prefer Elementary over Sherlock? Do you hate both shows? Do you just hate Sherlock Holmes in general? Comment down below, let me know what you think. I previously discussed the films in Nola Holmes with Henry Cavill and Millie Bobby Brown, and Mr. Holmes with the great Sir Ian McKellen as the titular character, as well as the Japanese series Miss Shrock, starring the now dearly missed Yuko Takeuchi, as well as various comic book movies, including the very seasonally appropriate Shazam, as well as Venom, Joker, Hellboy 2019, the Blade Trilogy, Alita Battle Angel, Aquaman, Deadpool 2, Avengers Infinity War, Black Panther, Wonder Woman, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, Warner Brothers' Suicide Squad, as well as Zack Snyder's Man of Steel, Batman v Superman and Watchmen, and Joss Whedon's Justice League. Plus reviews for all four of Disney's Star Wars films and all the answers in Fox's uh, Predator franchise. I also tried doing in my hand recently at some wrestling listicles. I did a video discussing all of the women's SummerSlam matches from 2016 to 2019, and a video discussing all of CM Punk's SummerSlam matches. That one's on Daily Motion, though, because WWE are a bunch of jerks who keep blocking my video on YouTube. Stay tuned for my video discussing the two Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes films, and have yourselves a great day. Remember to wash your hands and wear a fucking mask, and if you live in the U.S. state of Georgia, please be sure to vote in the upcoming runoff election in January. I'd love for you to pick Reverend Raphael Warnock and John Ossa, but you pick whoever you want for your senator. I want to add one little thing real quick. Uh, while I was looking for pictures for my Enola Holmes video, I actually stumbled across in Google Images this fun little DeviantArt comic comparing the relationship between... Holmes and Watson in Elementary with the relationship between Holmes and Watson in Sherlock. Do you feel that? I thought it was just a cute thing a really that really accurately summarized the two shows, so I actually uh, I poked around. I don't know this person's uh uh, deep in art page and they actually have a lot of uh, comics that they've drawn just comparing and contrasting the two shows and I would really encourage you to check them out they are called Mary FGR 23 uh, like I said they're on DeviantArt I've said this multiple times already now um, give them a look I put the I put a link to them in the description for this video please check them out and until then, Woodstock, out!